I'm Laura Wasilowski. And I'm Frida Anderson. We're two members of the Chicago School of Fusing. And we're going to share our tips and tricks with you and um, a couple of projects that you can do. Laura, you're going to do... I'm going to show you how to make this little quilt. This is called Birds and Flowers, a fused art quilt. And I'm going to show you how to do prairie flowers using decorative blades. So I hope you, that you will stay tuned and join us for all of our episodes. Come join us. So Frida, you've made this wonderful quilt called Prairie Grasses. How did you make it? Thanks for asking, Laura. <laughs> I used my hand-dyed fused fabrics, but you may not always want to use hand-dyed, so I'm going to talk to you about how I've applied the fusible web to the fabric and what kind of fabrics and um, to use that work best with fusible. And we're going to show you some of the tools we use. And Laura, what are you going to share? I'm going to talk about the release paper, the paper that comes with fusible web, and how you use it when you're creating your artwork, how to do pattern transfer as well. Great. So hold on. Here we come. So these are the tools that you need to start with. We use Wonder Under number 805. It's from Pellon. It comes with the release paper, and we've both been very happy with that product. We have obviously use our rotary ruler and rotary cutter and a rotary mat. Good idea, Frida. Use that mat. That's right. <laughs> and then we like to use for marking um, an extra fine Sharpie marker or a pencil. Both of those work really well, and Laura's going to discuss that process with you. And of course you need really sharp scissors when you're cutting out um, your designs. I like these scissors. They fit my big thumbs, Frida. Oh yes, and you do have big hands. I've noticed that about you, Laura. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Frida. <laughs> and of course fabric. Laura and I are both hand dyers, so we like to use our hand dyed fabrics when we're creating, but you can also use uh, printed or commercial fabrics to work with. Um, one of the things that we've discovered along the way is using something that's printed probably isn't your best choice. More like a batik works better where the color runs all the way through to the back side because on a printed fabric it, you've got this white on the back. And we're raw edge fusers so that when you cut out a design it's going to leave a little white edge along there and we don't want to do that. We're raw edge. We're very raw. raw. We're so raw. <laughs> Show me how you fuse, Frida. Okay, so to fuse the fabric, you want to cut out your fusible and have it just slightly smaller than your fabric so that your fusible doesn't come off at of the edge and then get fusible on your, your surface or on your iron. That would be bad. Yes, that's bad, and, and um, you, we don't want to do that. Have and you ever done that? Many times. Oh, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to use a hot dry iron when you apply the fusible so it's an adhesive it will stick to the back of your fabric and then you want to let it cool because I like to work without the paper on my fused fabric and we also use the paper for other uh, things that we do Laura's going to share some of that with you in just a few minutes this is called release paper Frida it's my favorite thing in the whole world. I doubt that. So stay tuned and uh, Laura's going to show you how to transfer the design using the release paper. So one of the things that you get after you fuse fabrics, after you transfer the glue to your fabric, is release paper. This is silicone release paper and it's really important to keep it whole when you uh, peel it off the fabric. Release paper is used in many ways in fusing. One of those is to build components, like what I've done here. I've actually built them right on the release paper, and after they cool off, I can peel them off and put them onto my quilt top like that. And these are little elements from your little quilt that you're going to do. That's right, birds and flowers. Another use for release paper that I've discovered is a lot of times you'll have fabrics that are really light in value, and you can't tell which side the glue is on. So I'll put that little piece of fabric between two pieces of release paper, iron it, and the side it sticks to, Frida, is the glue side. Very important tip so that it doesn't end up on the back of your iron. <laughs> Here's another way that I use release paper. When I'm making my little quilts, um, I always use release paper on top of the quilt when I'm ironing. The reason I do that is um, if something's upside down, also, irons are very dirty. 
They're dirty, dirty They're things. They're just filthy things. That's anyway. right. <laughs> but if I drop a little element upside down, in other words, the glue is facing the wrong way, when I fuse it, it'll end up on the release paper rather than the bottom of the iron. Good to know. So it's a good way to protect your iron and the top of your So you don't quilt. get little fusible things on your quilt that you don't want there. And I also use release paper for pattern transfer. This is a great trick that this, I learned from Laura. This is really cool. So here's the pattern. This is the pattern for birds and flowers, and I'll show you how, to I, how I use it. You have to have a Sharpie marker. You're going to use an extra fine point Sharpie marker. There's my pattern. I use a piece of release paper. Remember, release paper doesn't have any glue on it. And I'm going to trace that shape onto the release paper with my black marker. So once it's traced, there's my shape like that. There's my little release paper. I'm going to go get my hand dyed fabric. There's my fabric for my bird. There's the glue side like that. I'll put the ink to the glue, just like that. I take a hot dry iron. Where is that iron? Over there. We'll pretend this is my iron. <laughs> and I'll iron that down. Sometimes I even run the tip of the iron around just the black mark. So let's pretend it's all fused. It cools down. It's important that you let it cool so that the fusible doesn't come up again with the release paper. That's right. So it's all cooled down, and then when I pull it up, see, there's the mark on the glue. Perfect. The glue picks up the ink from the mark that you've made. So that way, what I see, what I've drawn, is what I get when I cut out my little bird shape. And here I am. I've started cutting it out. I'm using my really sharp scissors. Important to use t sharp tools like that and I'll cut out just inside the black line. So that's how I use my release paper for pattern transfer. And one other trick is when I'm using light colored fabrics, I use a pencil. Works the same way, and on dark colored fabrics, I use the marker. I can see it better. And one, then one more thing, Laura. One last thing, this is beware. You can overfuse this glue. Remember, it's a heat activated glue. If you fuse it too much, you fuse it out. And you don't want to be a fused burnout Fuser. I hope you found these tips helpful. And we'll be using them to make our little patterns, prairie flower and birds and flowers. So stay tuned and keep on fusing. Press on!